This video shows the role of flexible bronchoscopy in infants with Strider. Strider in infants may be potentially serious. Laryngomalacia is the most common cause followed by huckel cord palsy subglottic stenosis. Other rare would be laryngeal clefts, cysts, atresia, hemangioma, laryngocele and vascular rings. These neonates usually present with respiratory distress, strider, hoarse cry, dyspnea, aspiration, cyanosis, wheezing and failure to thrive. To diagnose, detailed birth history is important. History of fluctuations, positional changes, feeding, cough, distress, cry, wheezing, physical examination in different positions, radiography when needed and endoscopic evaluation either flexible or rigid is must. Flexible scopy under LA is safe and examination is in an awake, dynamic and natural state whereas rigid endoscopy involves general anesthesia risk. To pre-oxygenate the child, decongest the nose, nebulize with xylocaine and no sedation. Flexible bronchoscopy performed in OT with pulse and oxygen monitoring with 3.2 mm bronchoscope per nasally with video recording. Flexible bronchoscopy done in awake state. Transnasally the scope is passed after decongestion with xylocaine jelly lubrication. Nose and nasopharynx examined. Oropharynx larynx also examined. Scope is connected to the camera and video recorded on the monitor. This neonate is with inspiratory strider and with laryngomalacia. Laryngomalacia is with intermittent respiratory strider in first two weeks of life, worsens with feeding, agitation, excitement or supine positioning, recurrent respiratory infection, feeding difficulties, GRD and failure to thrive, larynx with omega shaped epiglottis, cuneiform prolapse and short AV folds, Tracheobronchial tree may be examined for additional anomalies. Laryngomalacia, the prolapse is in the supraglottis, either posterior redundant mucosa and accessory cartilage over arytenoid, lateral due to short AE folds and anterior due to posterior displacement of epiglottis in glottic inlet. Surgery treatment is supraglottoplasty by dividing short AE folds and reducing the redundant mucosa by CO2 laser, micro debrider or cold knife instruments. Valvular cyst is a rare cause of strider. Common symptoms are dyspnea, feeding difficulties, coughing, failure to thrive. Differential diagnosis is dermoids, teratomas, lymphangioma, hemangioma or lingual thyroid. Treatment is endoscopic marsupialization or excision. In unilateral huckel cord paralysis, the cry is often breathy or weak. Strider is uncommon and there is late, little tendency to airway obstruction. Most cases of unilateral cord paralysis can be treated expectantly. Many cases are mixed, but tracheobronchial tree may be examined for additional anomalies. Bilateral local cord palsy, the strider and cords are in fixed adducted position, voice, cry and feeding may be normal, imaging is done for cardiac or CNS evaluation, Treatment is by chordotomy, arytenoidectomy endoscopically. Differential diagnosis is with arytenoid fixation under GA palpating the arytenoid. Subglottic stenosis is with strider, dyspnea or tachypnea. It may be congenital or acquired after prolonged uh, ventilation. To assess the length, location, character and grade of stenosis. For mild, multiple endoscopic dilatations are needed along with laser or steroids. For severe laryngotracheal reconstruction is needed. Tracheal stenosis may take the form of membranous web, segmental or whole organ stenosis. Gentle dilatation using bronchoscopes of increasing diameter may be tried. Upper trachea may be managed by tracheoplasty. Tracheal obstruction with pulsatile anterior aberrant innominate artery 1 to 2 cm above carina with fish mouth appearance of trachea may be associated with an aberrant right subclavian artery and if symptoms are there vascular decompression may be needed tracheostomy is not to be done 
anterior glottic web with weak soft or absent cry since birth strider is rare may be biphasic versions with exertion evaluate occult mobility subglottic lumen thickness and firmness of web and treatment is division of web with laser or cold instruments tracheal bronchus for our right upper lobe is often associated anomaly as tracheoesophageal fistula is also sometimes associated advantages are infant in awake state no general anesthesia or traumatic views larynx in dynamic and natural state allows whole tracheobronchial tree evaluation and allows analysis with video recording cricoarytenoid fixation evaluate with dl scopy not to do with very severe strider so flexible bronchoscopy is quick safe simple cost effective method and no risk of anesthesia thank you